Hello, and welcome to the third discussion on sampling distributions. We're going to talk about sample means today. All right, so specifically three things we want to cover. Sampling distribution of the sample mean, mean and standard deviation. We want to talk about sampling from a normal population, and then we're going to talk about the central limit theorem. All right, so let's talk about sample means. So I have on the left a graph that shows the percent of households with earnings between zero and four hundred thousand dollars. And on the right, I have a sampling distribution for the means of household earnings, uh, where that sample size is 100. And so you can see that I have some representation of a curve which looks to be not exactly normal, and then a sampling distribution which, uh, when the sample size is large enough, starts to converge or <clears throat> uh, center around that actual uh, population mean. So these two graphs, both the sampling distribution and the distribution of the percent of households, end up looking a little bit different. <clears throat> but the mean value uh, gets represented in the sampling distributions accurately when that value for the sample size is large enough. All right, <clears throat> so back to sample means. We're going to suppose that sample mean um, is the mean of an SRS drawn of size n from a large population that has a mean of u and a standard deviation of sigma. The mean of the sampling distribution then is going to be the mean of the population. Uh, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is going to be uh, sigma over the square root of the sample size as long as the 10% condition is satisfied. All right, so we're going to run with these parameters. So the mean of the sampling distribution is going to be the mean of the population, and the standard deviation of the sample is going to be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. And we're going to use that formula for standard deviation as long as the 10% condition is satisfied. All right, so let's go through an example 7.3.1. Uh, the example, sulfur compounds uh, such as DMS are sometimes present in wine. DMS causes off odors, so winemakers want to know the odor threshold, the lowest concentration of DMS that a human nose can detect. Study shows that the DMS odor threshold for adults follows a roughly normal distribution with a mean of 25 micrograms per liter and a standard deviation of 7 uh, micrograms per liter. So suppose we take a simple random sample of 10 adults and determine uh, the mean odor threshold for the sampled individuals. What is the uh, mean of the sampling distribution? And what is the standard deviation? <clears throat> of the sampling distribution. And we're going to check uh, to see if the 10% condition is met. All right, so what is the mean of the sampling distribution? Since uh, we're assuming that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean, then the uh, sample mean is equal to the population mean of 25 micrograms per liter. <clears throat> All right, so that's the first part. Second, what is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution? Check that the 10% condition is met. Sample size is 10 <clears throat> adults, definitely less than or equal to one-tenth of the population of all adults. So that satisfies that. <clears throat> we have our population standard deviation of 7 uh, divided by the square root of the sample size of 10 leaves us with a standard deviation for the sample of 2.214. All right, so that's all we want to know. All right, so this is your homework, 7.3.1.
Uh, I'm going to let you copy this down. The number of movies viewed in the last year by high school students has an average of 19.3 with a standard deviation of 15.8. Uh, we take an SRS of 100 high school students and calculate the mean number of movies viewed by the sample. What is the mean of the sampling distribution? And <clears throat> what is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution? And we, of course, need to check that 10% condition. So I'm going to let you copy this down. And I'm going to move on in a minute. All right, second thing we want to talk about. Sampling from a normal population. All right. <clears throat> so uh, sampling distribution of a sample mean from a normal population. Suppose a population is norm normally distributed with a mean of some value in a standard deviation. Then the sampling distribution of uh, X bar has a normal distribution with a mean that's uh, the population mean and a standard deviation that we've already defined provided the 10% condition is met. So we have already talked about this, and this is for a normal population. All right, so let's take an example here. The height of young women follows a normal distribution with a mean of 64.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. Find the probability that a randomly selected woman is taller than 66.5 inches. So we're going to use what we know about normal approximations to find and the normal standardized uh, normal distributions of the table to determine probabilities. Find the probability that the mean height of an SRS of 10 young women uh, exceeds 66.5 inches. All right, so the first thing we want to do, find the probability that a randomly selected woman is taller than 66.5 inches. You go straight to the table, 66.5 uh, minus 64.5 divided by the standard deviation of the population is 0 0.80. Uh, so z score of 0 0.80, the probability that z is greater than uh, 0 0.80 is 1 minus from the table, 0.7881, or 21.2% of uh, the time we're going to find a randomly selected woman that's taller than 66.5 inches. All right, so B, find the probability that the mean height of an SRS of 10 young women exceeds 66.5 uh, inches. So now we're looking at a distribution with a sample size of 10. So that standard deviation is going to change from 2.5 to 2.5 where the square root of 10 or 0 0.79. So go back to 66.5 minus 64.5 again then we end up with a z-score of 2.53. So the probability that the sample mean, not an individual value, but the sample mean is greater than 66.5, ends up being uh, 0 0.0057. We have a z-score of 2.53. The probability that uh, value is greater than, z-score is greater than 2.53 is 0 0.0057. So you can see then that an individual selection from a population is going to be much more likely to be at 66 or greater than 66 and a half inches than the mean of a sample of uh, 10 young women. All right, so it's much less likely for the mean height to be greater than 66.5 than it is for a single woman to have a height of 66.5 inches. So the sampling means then are going to tend uh, to be much closer in distribution towards that population mean than any single uh, value. All right, so this brings us to homework 7.3.2. Second homework problem. Uh, Trader Joe's makes their crunchy peanut butter in 16-ounce containers. They've conducted experiments and have determined that the mean weight is 16.1 ounces of the population and standard deviation of 0 0.15 ounces. Explain what outcome is more likely, a single jar weighing less than 16 ounces or a mean of 10 jars weighing less than 16 ounces, and then justify your claim by finding the probability of each of the outcomes. So I'm going to leave this up here for a moment, and then I'm going to move on. All right. All right, last thing we want to talk about is the central limit theorem. 
Uh, and so in this, the part, second part of the discussion, we talked about normal population, so normal distribution. Central limit theorem is going to apply to uh, distributions that are not normal. All right, so let's talk about specifically what the central limit means. So central limit theorem uh, says the sample mean is going to be approximately normal, that distribution is going to be normal when n is large and drawn from an SRS with a mean value and a finite standard deviation, even when the population distribution is not normal. All right, so this means that when we're checking for normal conditions, um, if the population distribution is normal, then the sampling distribution is also going to be normal. This is true no matter what the sample size is. All right. However, when we have a population distribution that is not normal, then the central limit theorem says the sampling distribution uh, will x bar will be approximately normal in most cases when n is greater than or equal to 30. All right, so now we have a new condition uh, to validate normal conditions. When the population distribution is normal, then we can just say the population distribution is normal. But if we know that the population distribution is not normal or we don't know whether the population distribution is normal or not, then we need to establish normal conditions by saying that the sample size has to be greater than or equal to 30. In that case, the central limit theorem is going to say even when the population distribution is not normal, the sampling distribution will end up being normal itself. And so let's take a look graphically uh, what this means. So I have a, uh, a population distribution which is skewed left here. It is not normal. But the central limit theorem says when and if standard deviation is a finite value and that sample size is 30 or larger, then we're going to end up with a sampling distribution that is normal, even though the population distribution is not. So that's what the central limit theorem says. All right, uh, so let's talk about some other graphics that might help you. So distribution, when we have smaller sampling sizes, you can see uh, the distribution of means is pretty varied. We talked about this before, uh, as that value for n gets larger and larger. Then we can see how it normalizes to a normal curve. All right, so as n gets larger, um, even though the population uh, distribution is not normal, the distribution of the means of the sample will become uh, normal. All right, so let's talk about an example. Uh, run an air conditioning service company. The average time to service an AC unit is one hour, the standard deviation of uh, one hour. The next week you will have 70 air conditionings to service. You budget 1.1 hours per AC. Will 1.1 hours be enough? So we're going to follow the uh, state plan to conclude process. All right, so state what is the probability that the average maintenance time X for 70 units exceeds 1.1 hours? All right, so the um, population uh, mean is one hour, so the sample mean we're going to assume is one hour. Standard deviation for the sample uh, is going to be standard deviation for the population divided by the square root of n, uh, which ends up being uh, 0.12. Uh, there's no uh, commentary on normality, uh, but we do know the sample size is greater than 30, so we've uh, we've met the condition for normal distribution of the sampling mean, uh, and so we can use a standard deviation uh, formula. So standard deviation for the sample mean is 0.12, and then we're going to evaluate 1.1 minus 1, so we budget 1.1 hours per uh, air conditioning unit, 1.1 minus 1 uh, over 0.12 brings us 0.83. It's the probability that uh, the mean is greater than 0.83 is going to be 1 minus 0.7967, or 20.33%. And I just had to make an adjustment here on the probabilities because I had uh, put in the sample mean here into a z-score. So I just changed this value out. 
Uh, so the probability that the sample mean is greater than 1.1 is the probability the z-score is greater than 0 0.83, uh, which is 1 minus, uh, if you look at the uh, table for z-scores, 1 minus uh, 0.7967 or 20.33%. All right. Uh, so the conclusion is there's a 20.3% chance that the technicians will not complete the work in the budgeted time. All right, so let's uh, move to our last homework problem, 7.3.3. Uh, the number of texts sent during a typical day by a randomly selected high school student follows a right skew distribution. So it should be a Q to you with a mean of, which means it's not normal, with a mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 35. How likely is it that a random sample of 50 students will have sent more than a total of 1,000 texts in the last 24 hours? Uh, so follow the uh, four-step process state plan, do conclude. Uh, and I'm going to leave this up here for a moment while you copy this down. And that's going to be the end of our lesson for today. Thanks very much for joining. That is it for Chapter 7. Uh, please join us next time when we move on to Chapter 8. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, estimating with confidence uh, when we begin Chapter 8.